This is what I now do with most of my cuttings. Top sphagnum moss and perlite on the propagator. When that roots, the roots entangle around the perlite and the sphagnum moss. And when I take it out, the roots aren't bare. So I pop the sphagnum moss and the perlite around the roots in it, and I get virtually 100% germination. It's a Mauritius blue red nectared flower, and it drips blood, basically. It drips red nectar. It was the first plant in the world to be found with red nectar. And it has these little, these little droplets of nectar that come out. It's eaten by geckos. They pollinate the plant. This flower actually opened up this morning, especially for us. <laughs> this, this monster is a, a dinner plate tree from, it's, where's it from? It's from Southeast Asia. And it's actually used as a dinner plate. They use the leaves to eat their dinner out of. And uh, a friend of mine grew this for me from seed. I lost, I, I grew it from seed and lost mine. And he kindly brought me around one of his seedlings uh, about two years ago. And it's, it's looking absolutely beautiful. And I, I grew it from seed again this year and took down with the, uh, a small seedling so they can, they can grow it as well. But I thought I was going to take this one. I thought, you know what, no, I'm going to keep this one this time. <laughs> this is too nice. So, uh, and because uh, it was gifted to me by a friend as well, it didn't seem right. So, uh, but yeah, what a beautiful plant. It's, it's, I don't know if it's, it's I mean, just absolutely <laughs> colossal leaf. Sometimes we say things are as big as your head, these are much, much bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lucky I've got a little head. <laughs> <laughs> and what was its Latin name again? It's uh, Petrosperum acefolium from uh, Southeast Asia. But when the, when, the new, when the new growth comes out, it comes out real chocolate brown, it looks dead. And then suddenly the leaves turn a slightly different colour, then it turn this lovely dark green. But uh, quite an unusual plant, nice, nice underleaf as well. It's got this um, almost silver underneath, underleaf to it. But yeah, just a little different. I bet they look lovely when they catch a breeze. Oh yeah, they do. Well, my garden catches, everyone else's garden seems to be no wind. We get the lightest breeze and my garden's going like this. <laughs> That's because you have sails in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now this, I grow this from seed every year and I love this. I don't know if you grow this, Alan. Alistomachia fimbriata. No, I don't. I like it. Oh. Isn't that stunning? Yeah. I've Actually, seen this online. I've never seen it in real life. What a spectacular it, plant. It's, it's actually hardy. What's the second name again? It's Fimbriata. It's hence the little, little, little bits around the, the side of the flowers. And that is actually hardy, Mike. Hardy, yeah. And it's, it's, it's usually used as ground cover. I, I, I put sticks and grow it up, but yeah. it actually goes on the ground. It gets about two foot high. And uh, yeah, hardy. Beautiful, beautiful lease. Oh. Absolutely. The leaves but, uh, are really marbled, like a silver veining. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful. This is this year's seedling, which is which is just a great looking little plant. Do they make a tuber underneath the ground, Mike? Um, yes, they would. It will come back next year. Yeah, yeah. It forms, like most Aristolochias, it, it forms that underground tuber, which is um, very poisonous. By the way, Aristolochia is uh, one of the most poisonous plants. Actually, more Don't poisonous. Don't me. <laughs> <laughs> more poisonous than ricinus, I've been told. The, uh, really? Yeah, well, we yeah. won't test it. <laughs> <laughs> no. How would you describe those flowers? Because they really are interesting, aren't they? Well, they, they're, they're frimbriata. They have these little bits around the outside, like the lilashes. And they're, they're, they're yellow with, with chocolate brown um, speckles all over. Because the common name for an aristolachia is a Dutchman's pipe, isn't it? That's right, yeah, yeah. But isn't that gorgeous? Just I mean, I, I just the, those those flowers, they look like some kind of duck with a bonnet on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and when they and when they seed, it's the most amazing seed pods. The seed, I've probably got a photo somewhere. They they form like little baskets, and the seeds sit in the basket. Oh. The seeds out of the basket. It's oh. Beautiful. Actually, the seed pods are just as lovely as the seeds. When it, when it forms. I'm going to have to get that. That is absolutely fantastic. I should have some, I'll have seeds later in the year. I can send you some seed talent. Bless your heart, really wonderful. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful plant though. And I often, I often lust after plants that nobody else has. And uh, one of them- You did pretty well at that, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> it's all of my FLOMO is sort of daily. <laughs> I'll see something online. Or yesterday when I was at, at uh, Wisley, I, 
I've taken snaps of about three or four plants that I'm, oh, I need one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I should be, uh, be begging for cuttings, I think. But this one, uh, another one with cuttings grown in uh, sphagnum and perlite is uh, Hoffmania, a taffeta plant from southern Mexico. And this was a small little cutting. Well, it's actually got a, a little piece here. That was about the size of the cuttings at the bottom. Look at those leaves. Aren't they gorgeous? And that's sat outside all summer. And it has this most amazing underleaf as well, the red veins. Which is I just need wonderful. that plant. <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? But look at the, look at the stems. Oh. The stem is fantastic. So again, it's one of those plants you just can't get. You can't find it anywhere. And uh, a friend you of mine tease. was. A, yes, <laughs> no, no, no. It's one of those things. It's, it, it's one of those things where I, some, somebody says to me, "Yeah, you know, why have you got eleven thousand followers on Instagram?" I said, "Because when I ask for something, one of those eleven thousand followers has probably got the plant on wants. <laughs> <laughs> so I could probably send them something they would like as well in return, which is always nice." So uh, yeah, that came from a friend off of Instagram who uh, I put my uh, plant wish list on, and. Uh, I think about three of the plants that were on my big list, people had and sent me cuttings, which is which is amazing. So that's, that's another another one of my beautiful. The, the midrib on that is because there's such a dark green leaf, and then you get this absolute bright silver sort of stripe running down the middle. It's that's so eye catching. It's, it's a beautiful plant. I'll send the underleaf. Yeah. Is, is oh, well. we all want that. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely uh, a plant for the orangery. Yes. Oh, yeah, it would look lovely in there. And it's in a, it's in quite a small uh, clay pot. I like my clay pots. So virtually yeah, everything gets transplanted into a clay pot. You have um, some great clay pots with bits of moss on them, and uh, they're beautiful. You have, the, I think, the finest, most attractive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> look, at that, look at that algae growing on there. It's gorgeous. And some of the ferns that I grow are, are just... <laughs> They're just overflowing with the with the uh, with the roots, which uh, which I, I love. I actually it. know a lady that 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 sells old terracotta pots, and she actually paints them to look like that. Does she? Oh, she I actually like does. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I do love a uh, ferns, I uh, I must thank you for putting a post up around about when I bought Coniogramme emiensis, or however you say it. Mm. Um, I think you grew yours. Did you grow yours in a hanging basket? Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone to get it. I have to look. <laughs> that is amazing. Yours is so big. That was dug up out the garden in the spring. So I was fed up. As soon as it came up in the garden, the slugs ate it. Yes. It was gone, completely gone back. So I thought, you know, I'm going to dig up what's left, stick it in a hanging basket, feed it, and I've not had one slug. They, they can't do this. They can't go down these wires and eat it. <laughs> well, I didn't go hanging basket, but thanks to you posting that, I have kept mine up out of the way on a metal table, which the slugs yeah. don't seem to like to go up. And so far, so good. So thank yeah. you very much, because otherwise it would have got munched to the ground. Yeah, I've had it in the garden for probably about three or four years, and every year it comes up, it gets munched and destroyed. And there's not many, and it's one of those things. There must be there's certain plants that slugs and snails just are attracted to, and they'll miss everything else and go straight for this and eat it. Don't know what it is, but uh, and this is one of those plants that they they love to do. But it's such a fantastic hardy plant. But I thought I'll, I'll leave it leave it in a hanging basket, and it's it's done really well. So I'm, I'm quite chuffed with that. And a lot of people I know who had the same problem have now adapted this and put it into hanging baskets. I think it's quite a good thing to do with ferns, especially if you live in a very dry area and 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 you you haven't got sort of lovely shady moist places to grow ferns. If you grow them in pots and grow them in the house in you know in light, but not not sunlight, yeah. um, it works really really well. I forgot to say. This is another great one for hanging baskets, Aristorchus. Oh, yes, oh, yes of course. So, so this one's often grown as a hanging basket plant, and you can put them in amongst the... And this, I say, this seed grown this year, so they grow pretty quickly. So another great one for a hanging basket. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, what else have I got? Oh, yes. So another... another. So this is what I thought the... Um, the I expect you grow this, Brilliantasia, the giant no, salvia. No. You don't. No. no. Oh, now this is this is the most fantastic plant you can get for a tropical border. 
Brilliantasia, it's a mouthful, this one. Eulogirica lindy, lindua. As ever, I'm going to have fun with the plant list for this episode. Yeah, I'm going to have to write that one down because I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> but it, fantastic, fantastic plant. This was, uh, this was a plant swap with a friend, and uh, I'd, I'd not grown this before, a gentleman in Mousel uh, in Cornwall who, uh, who grew this. And his is absolutely fantastic. I think he leaves his out in the year as well. But again, the most fan- this is what I thought this was, was the stems are virtually identical. But the leaves, the leaves get very big, and the flowers are just oh, unbelievable. The flowers are superb. Um, it flowers quite late in the year, so I'll probably keep this in the greenhouse to uh, to get it to flower, because I think it will probably get frosted outside. Down in Mouse, all his flowers quite late in the late in the season, and it's uh, just such a stunning plant. So another another super leaf plant, which I love. Not my garden on the edge, um, is it by any chance? Dominic. Yes. Um, I think on Instagram, is he my garden on the edge? Yes, yes, yes. He is. I love his, everyone needs to follow that account. It is so wonderful. Fantastic, gone, fantastic account. And the giant, uh, the giant lobelias uh, originated by, by me some time ago to, to a friend who then gave them to Dominic, who'd thrown them on and I'd given him seed, more seed for it. And uh, fantastic plant, such a generous plantsman as well. Very, and the garden is amazing. Gets no frost at all. So all of his aeoniums stay out, all his giant lobelias stay out, the Dendrosaurus littoralis that I grow stay out, and they're all grown to perfection. He's, he's a fantastic gardener, and uh, the, the garden is, if, you, if you're ever down that way, it, I'm sure you'd, you'd be up for a visit, because he's, uh, he's such, a, such a nice gentleman. Are you um, ever tempted to move to Mousel? <laughs> A couple of million pounds, I'd love to. Yeah, that is the problem. Buy a flat now, to be honest. <laughs> you just need a shed with a big garden. That's all we yeah, need. <laughs> I could just live in his garden, to be honest. It's big enough. <laughs> Shelter under the, the Lobelia leaves. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the roads are quite tight. I do struggle down down that way. With the, with the with the single 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 way roads and buses coming out, and having to reverse three miles backwards to let the bus pass. <laughs> yeah. And too many tourists. These are all the things we tell ourselves about why we don't live in that part yeah, of the world. Well, to be honest, I'm just down the road from Sandbanks. We've got, got the new forest. It's, it's a beautiful place where I live. We just do get frosts, which is... <laughs> but, hey, that's gardening. I lose a few, gain a few. <laughs> It's quite interesting you say that about the brilliant asias, Mike, being rather late flowering because, I mean, we've noticed over the past few years that our late summer and autumn seems to go on for longer than it used to. We don't yeah. get frost. I mean, we seldom get frost here if we get frost at all until after Christmas, um, yeah. early January. And that, that's so, so, I mean, you know, these plants that flower later, providing you've got an air and a spare, um, yeah. you know, you can leave them out, let them flower and then... Yeah. If they come through, they do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, I, I've, I've been leaving a few different things outside that uh, I don't normally. I always make sure I've got spare. Yeah. I always take things at the end of the season, but yeah, I do. But I'm kind of, I'm kind of perfectionist when it comes to our garden. I don't, I don't like plants. I can overwinter stuff, and it comes. People say, "Oh, it's hardy. It came back, but it looks terrible." <laughs> I can't. I can't they're, they're out. They go. They go. <laughs> I did go through that stage of trialing plants like begonia luxuriance. Yeah. That stage. And it's come back from the roots. Looks terrible. Two foot high. The one in the pot, fourteen foot high. You know, <laughs> no competition, is it? I just it's, no. It's, just, it's, it's, I, it's all it's all a matter of priorities. And I think I agree with you. If you want to grow these kind of plants with big leaves and yeah. prosperous looking plants, I mean, keep them under cover and put them out so that they look prosperous in the garden. Because what's yes. the point of having them in the garden if they look dismal? No, no, I don't. I don't do that. We, we we're lucky. We've got this big. Big carport that I keep all my plants over winter, so my plant pool. And uh, this is just full of plants. I've got a big, big garage, which uh, a couple of roofs so you can get tall plants, three greenhouses, a summer house, a shed. So we can, there's plenty of room to put plants. And it's, yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather them look pristine in the spring than uh, yeah. leave them yeah. out in the garden and, uh, and looking tatty. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. One last little one, which I pulled out. And this is, I don't know if you grow. Pytalacra americana variegatum. I've just, I've just got a plant of it, a seedling. Oh, ah, brilliant. So 
this is this is one of those I took to Wisley because they they don't grow this. Uh, they grow the normal pytalaca, and uh, I know Matthew likes his um, variegated. Yeah. So I took one along for Matthew to, to grow, but it's just one of those ones that uh, easy from seed each year. The seedlings come out of varying um, degrees of variegation. It's just one of those nice variegated plants. I have to thank people like Philip and Matthew for uh, getting me into variegated plants because I hated them for years. I never, <laughs> I never, I never grew variegated plants. And then I got one. I think Philip brought me one. And then Matthew was showing his, and I've got quite a collection of variegated plants now. <laughs> scattered You've been converted. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I know. I know people that say they say one or two things. It looks as if it's got infestation by red spider mite, or it's been sprayed with weed killer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just I love I. I've always loved variegation. I do sometimes think I have very little taste, but I'm very comfortable with it. I mean, I dress in ridiculous colours. I garden <laughs> ridic with ridiculous colours. I've had such a year of, of coleus or Seleda's stem and appreciation in my garden. Oh. And the other half doesn't get it at all. And I point out the pattern and say, look at that amazing one called Redhead. And look at that amazing one. That's called Pink Chaos. And it's got such a perfect name because it's shrieking <laughs> stripes of pink and green. And he just looks at it like it looks, it's really horribly colourful. <laughs> Just well, give I me like, some I green like, leaves. I, I love coleus. I think they're fantastic plants. I had one called fishnet stockings once. Oh. <laughs> it's um, all in the name, Mike. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, no, yeah, yeah. It's 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 a very funny. Uh, if I should tell it on here. Yeah, I was sat <laughs> my wife, and uh, she was looking over. And she said, um, "Why is that lady sending you her red undies, which was a, a, a little plant?" And I said, "Because I'm sending her my fishnet stockings." <laughs> <laughs> <It was. laughs> uh, a lady in England. And, uh, this so this would work so well we, we, with um, with Rob and Rosie Hardy. We did this whole discussion about a sort of sexy border off the back of the uh, yeah. frilly knickers and enemy, <laughs> and we sort of started talking about Chantilly lace and all these different things. But yeah, red undies red and undies. fishnet stockings. <laughs> yes, begonia of Anciana red undies. Um, like Claret Jug and uh, Sapporo, but this one is called Red Undies, which she sent me. Um, so she sent me her Red Undies, and I sent her my fishnet stockings. <laughs> That's what. That is so good. I think the more I, the more I garden, the more I realise you just like what you like, and as long yeah, as you own it and you don't care what other people say. For years, based on one gardener poo-pooing um, Euphorbia Ascot Rainbow, I thought that all serious gardeners hated that plant. And then gradually I've been to gardens, the wonderful Brian Ellis, who was on our Galanthaholic Galanthophile special a couple of years ago. I was walking around his garden and he pointed down and said, oh, that plant is wonderful. I said, is that Ascot Rainbow? And I think if I'm in company with Brian Ellis then that is excellent company to be in. And I, I am proud of liking variegated euphorbias. <laughs> so your love of variegated plants, is it still growing? Do you think you're going to end up in a Philip Ostenbrink map pottage situation? Well, I do have a few of Philip's variegated aspidistra, which I absolutely love. They're, they're, and I prefer the variegated forms to, to most of the other ones. So, yeah, I could, uh, I could, I could be uh, turning to variegation quite a lot in the garden. Because my garden is very green. There's not a lot of colour. When people come, it's all about the foliage, the big leaves, and uh, the different textures and colours. This, this one actually is quite glaucous against the other greens in the garden, and it stands out. So it's mainly mainly foliage, but I have been putting a few little variegated plants in, in amongst to uh, sort of brighten it up a little bit. Because it's a jungle garden. You don't get a lot of variegation in the jungle. So it's a, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, definitely putting more in. Yeah. <laughs> glad to hear it <laughs> so have we now finally exhausted your show and tell mike um you've never exhausted it but yeah <laughs> I, 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 I struggled to get so many plants in around me this morning so uh... <laughs> i mean the thing is it, it's tempting to ask you to go for a traipse around your plant port because we can actually see some of your are they succulents on the back wall um yes yeah that my um He's off. There's an entire ladder display, a massive set of shelves, all filled with succulents. Uh, there's some. There's some of my uh, some of my succulents, and this this Alan is is a tribute to you. So I have one each side of my back door. All right. <laughs> you've got your greenhouse, and you've got your display. That I've actually still got the photo that I actually got the inspiration from from visiting right. okay. many years ago. 
and uh, I built these two either side of my back door. I, I, I keep these out every, all year, and uh, so that was uh, that was an East Russian copy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. What is the central sort of almost looks like a spiral spike? It's uh, you thought that's um, serious. This one, yeah. yeah, beautiful, isn't it? It's uh, serious. Jamma Karu. Looks like a helter skelter. It does, doesn't it? It's grown, it's really grown a lot since I got it. I got it quite a small plant. And it's a complete spiral. It's an amazing, amazing cactus. I'll try and I'll try and get things that uh, again other people haven't got and that, and yeah. that haven't seen. So I'll try and, and it does change quite a lot. As I get something new, something has to go. So I've only got a limited space. So I've got two one either side. And uh, but yeah, I do love some of the some of the more unusual type. Uh, that. Isn't that stunning? <laughs> <laughs> that looks like it should be under the sea. <laughs> it's a little prosula, like a podioides variegata, the variegated one, isn't it beautiful? It really Amazing. does look like a sea plant, and, it, and because of the way it moves, so we've got these sort of silvery yeah. um, spikes coming up, and they wibble um, as you move it. So it looks like oh, they wobble, <laughs> <laughs> like a sea yeah. anemone. Yes, yeah, beautiful plant. And now it's a little cutting for a friend. And, uh, it actually it, looks a bit like orchid roots. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, great. Little, starting to, and they, the roots are coming already on the little, it's very easy from cuttings. Just snip a bit off and uh, off it goes. That yeah. is fabulous. What a fabulous little character. I love a plant that you almost feel like you should put googly eyes on and it would be a little creature. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, try and, I'll try and find things that are a little bit, uh, a little bit different. Maybe. Always try. I was coveting that that exact display of succulents at East Ruston you were talking about. I was coveting uh, yesterday when I was taking a look around. You've got some phenomenal Kalanchoe in flower at the moment, Alan. I don't know the second name of it, I'm afraid, <laughs> but it produces these flat heads like cushions of brilliant red flowers. Oh, lovely. Um, and it, it, it flowers fairly late. Um, yeah. Yeah, it and looks it's a, wonderful. It's a very easy plant. Your display, you have a, a range of things, some more unusual, some, I suppose, a bit more common. There's a fabulous aloe poly filler in the midst of it all. But it is wonderful when you see something, either a cactus doing a little pink flower or, you know, something yeah. like the Kalanchoe, just this massive kind of panicle <clears throat> of brilliant, brilliant, bright red, eye-catching flowers um, really drew me in. I was, uh, I was quite besotted. <laughs> I don't know if you can see my depia. Oh, your depia. So it, it flowered early this year. Normally, it flowered. remember last time I came on, it hadn't, it, the buds were forming, I think, and it hadn't flowered. It's got 10, 10 lots of flower on it this year. I was going to ask what that was, actually. <laughs> so is that depia splendens? Depia splendens, the golden fuchsia. It's uh... absolutely wonderful. Such beautiful flowers. Yes, yeah, full of flower this year. Absolutely full. Of one, I think there's over ten lots of flower drooping down on it this year, all all beautifully in flower. So I'm really pleased with that plant. It's a cracker. Glorious. I tried pollinate it again. I was unsuccessful last year. I tried pollinate. I think you need a male and a female with that one. I don't think you can. I don't think it's self pollinated. I think you need two plants. So uh, I, I tickled it with a paintbrush for ages and nothing. It all just dropped off. But uh, mm. I'll try again. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yes, absolutely. Marvellous. Mike, you have treated us to uh, quite the array of plants. It is absolutely, well, I've, I've, my FLOMO list, when I go through this plant list, it's going to be a lot longer. That <laughs> is for sure. Uh, FLOMO, <laughs> if you have never watched one of these episodes before, where have you been? It's episode 93. Um, but FLOMO is a feeling I'm sure you're familiar with, certainly how Mike lives his life, <laughs> Alan and me, going around seeing plants all the time and wishing we could grow them, even if there's something we grew before and you think, why am I not growing that now? So a fear of missing out about a flower or a plant. I've got a couple. Uh, one of them um, is not an extraordinary, unusual plant at all. It was inspired by an extraordinary specimen, though, because in Alan's courtyard garden, where years ago you used to have tons of aeoniums that got lifted, but now it's had a bit of a reworking. You've got some lovely albizias in flower and some coppers and beautiful underplanting with tradescantias and around the edge, gorgeous plants, <coughs> so many ones. But the showstopper was a tithonia. 
the Mexican sunflower. I have never seen a Tithonia as enormous as this, absolutely covered in those brilliant orange flowers. Everyone knows I love orange. And I don't know why I haven't got Tithonia in my garden. This is crazy. Because it grows too big. <laughs> <laughs> But that's yeah. never stopped me before, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. Well, next year, I mean, I, I, I shall grow that again. I, for years, I didn't grow it because I think we had a very bad summer one year and it didn't, I hardly had any flowers on. And I thought, well, I'm, I won't bother with that again. And then somebody came to the plant fair and they had a couple of spare plants. They gave them to me. I grew them. They did well. And so this year, this year, I saved my own seed. And they must be eight feet tall, I suppose. They really are huge. Um, in fact, we, we actually... Ian and I got amongst them, and um, yesterday more more him than I, I have to say, and put some stakes in to hold them up because this weather forecast is such that there could be a bit of wind coming and a bit of rain coming, and I'd hate them to be bashed down. They're wonderful. I I I've often coveted Tithonias, but yours was the the deal clincher. I think having seen that <laughs> being so statuesque, mine will never be as big because everything at East Ruston is twice as big as normal no, 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 no. on steroids. So <laughs> I can yeah. only dream. But still, that that is right back in there on the wish list. And you shared a plant, Mike, on um, Instagram at Mike's Rare Plants, Instagram and Twitter. Must follow both of them. Um, I don't think I'll have the right spot for it because I suspect it wants to be quite humid, but it was, here we go, challenge how I had to pronounce this, Schismatoglottis willichii, with these long ovate leaves in deep green, streaked with pale green silver, this fabulous looking aroid, sh sh maybe shiz Schismatoglottis willichii. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, however we say it, it had these long dark green leaves with a sort of pale green or silver streaking or lines on it Ooh. I just I thought it was wonderful and uh, I looked it up and I it kind of wanted to be in a bathroom I think so I'm not sure I've got the right spot but stays stays in my humid greenhouse um it's one of these a lot of the local garden centers now go well into house plants and they're, they're bringing in all these exotic alocasias colocasias and uh, aroids and uh, there's some fantastic selections. We got a local uh, nursery near us, a garden centre near us, and they got the most amazing collection of uh, house plants now. Some of them rate uh, two or two hundred pound a piece. Uh, they're getting quite expensive. Uh, most of them start at about forty pound. They're uh, but they're real collector's pieces, and you can get some quite rare plants now. Not terribly into house plants, but if I can fit it into the humid greenhouse, then they'll they'll go and stay in in the heated to humid greenhouse. Yeah, that's one of them. It's nice I plant. can see why you went for that. That is, um, that's fabulous. How do you say it? I don't know. I just had to read the labels to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, reminds me, that reminds me of a little tale. I bought a Carex grass from, or sedge from, um, a stall at our plant stand, and it was from the plant heritage stand, and there was no name on it. I liked the look of the plant. We later found out what it was. But because there was no name on it, when somebody potted up the divisions for me, they put Carex thingamajig. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> but the thing was, somebody planted some in the garden with the label saying Carex thingamajig. <laughs> <laughs> Photonically named. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good old Ian Roof came to the rescue because he found out the proper name, and so we now it now has a proper name. Oh, there we go. I quite like thingamajig. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, where are you at with your flomo then? Especially fresh oh. back from a trip to Wisley. Absolutely. So we were actually lucky enough. We we dropped some plants off early, so we had to walk around the garden for an hour before it opened, which was which was a privilege. Oh. It was so so calming and lovely. And we were around the tropical garden, and uh, there was I took these. I don't know if you can see that photograph. Here it is here. Oh, wow. It's planted, it's planted outside, and that's the name. <laughs> Synedium compactum variety rubrum. So it's a, it's a euphorbia family. Wow. Oh, that, that's, that's my new flomo. I thought it was absolutely beautiful, um, beautiful foliage. Sort of mottled with chocolate or something, you know. Yes, it's... well, that's that's the bit down there. So I presume it comes out green and turns this red colour. I don't know, so I don't really know much about it. I haven't researched it yet, but uh, fell in love with it. Well, that's that's got to got to have one of those. So that's my, <laughs> that's my flomo flomo of the week. <laughs> 
I am not surprised. I think that would have had all of us snapping pictures. And uh, it is wonderful nowadays that you can take pictures of plants and labels. Yeah. And, and yeah. how, I mean, I'm sure all of us between us just have thousands and thousands of these. Oh, well, <laughs> a lot of sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> right then, Alan, flow-mo time. Well, I could go through the whole of Mike's list, of course, because, <laughs> well, I mean, you just have such interesting plants. And I, I know that you collect very rare and unusual plants, uh, many of which you grow from seed, and you've got a vast uh, network of friends that you do this with. Um, but I think out of today, I mean, mine is relatively ordinary, I suppose, but that little Ar Aristolochia fimbriata, fimbriata, that's going to be on my list because I think that scrambling around underneath hydrangeas or something in our woodland garden would look wonderful. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and something else I'm after, after is I had two, I've had two plants on my list for a long time. Thunder, you know one of them. One of them is a manihot, um, which you got and I didn't. Um, and I'm very, very envious, if not to say a little put out. <laughs> <laughs> when has that ever happened it. before, by the way? <laughs> I've, got, I've got a massive plant in the garden. It must be 15 foot tall, full of seed at the moment. Um, Is that Rami eye? Yeah, yeah. Totally hard. He's been outside for four years now. And, well, that, uh, that fills me with hope, Mike, because mine's about um, 40 centimetres tall, I suppose. Um, 18 inches tall and it was a small cutting that I bought from a uh, a lady whose garden we visited a few few weeks ago now my yeah. next thing that I want to know is, uh, I'm going to ask you if you grow it first is Brassiopsis Brassiopsis yeah. lumicola do you grow that yes yeah is it is it outside it is however dumicola when 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 the seed when the flowers form it takes up to five years for the flowers to open and it needs to be kept frost free so um. I got Three years worth of flowers on mine. So I've got this year's, last year's, and the year before's. And they're like little black, little black round balls. Yeah. And they'll yeah. burst into flower and then form, form berries after four to five years. So I bring it under my carpool. So I plunge plant it in the garden. I have, right. I've, I've got four Brassiopsis in the garden, uh, different varieties. I've got Hispida, I've got Dunicola. I've got um, mitus. Mitus. I've got two mitus, very large mitus. Um, that must be, it's huge. Uh, single stemmed, unfortunately. I topped it, uh, tried to grow the top piece, it didn't grow, and then it just carried on going up. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's always the way that you think I'll top it and it will sprout. No, nope, I topped it and it just went sideways and up. So it's about sort of 14 foot tall and uh, just one stem. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, a new Brassiopsis, which uh, I can't remember the name, but I've got four varieties of Brassiopsis in the garden. Well, that again fills me with hope. Just to revisit your manor hop, because um, mine is now a couple of years old, came from yeah. uh, the, the lovely Jurassic jungle. I was so grateful, especially because for once I had a plant Alan didn't have. And I would have taken cuttings, but I didn't dare. And I didn't dare, you know, it was a baby. So I didn't leave it out last winter. Downstairs, Lou, people have heard me say this before, <laughs> where it got overwintered, did very well. In fact, I, it helped teach me how to grow chili and glory vine from seed because I have tried before and put them in a propagator and stuff, but it turned out just leaving them in the uh, downstairs loo all winter, about four of these germinated and I had to get them out before, you know, the brassio the um, manahot got overwhelmed by, uh, by Ecrobacarpus. But uh, but yeah, mine is now a couple of years old and I don't dare leave it out. It still doesn't look kind of mature enough and woody enough to leave out. So how old were yours when you were brave enough to leave one out, Mike? Very small. They were two small. Foot, two foot, three foot high. Still yeah. not sure I'm brave enough. They're very hardy. They're very hardy. And they're very easy from cuttings. Uh, you can cut, you can, you can side lay, you can cut them into sections and lay them sideways and they'll, they'll, they'll come up for every node. Or you can just put them in normal way and they'll just, just grow. Very you can easy do that with bamboo too, can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Tetra, and tetrapanics roots. Yeah. It's like some layer and tetrapanics roots and they'll just come up from each node. Yeah. Maybe I'll try. I'm still not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try and take a cutting. Yeah. Do it in, do it in some uh, yeah. spackle moss and perlite. Well, we're all going to be trying that. I think that is tip of the week for sure, Mike. Um, thank you so much. You've clearly put so much preparation into dragging all these plants together for us to be able to enjoy. And boy, oh boy, have we enjoyed it. So 
please come back again and uh mm-hmm. we in the meantime we'll just cover all the plants on your instagram and your twitter because it's wonderful thank you thank you very much happy gardening everybody happy gardening everybody <laughs> bye-bye hey. I'm just going to stop you, Mike, because something slightly strange has happened to your audio and it sounds oh. you've gone a little. We can hear you, but you I think it might have stopped now, but there was just this sort oh. of strange no. interference. No. It was like a trolley going over cobblestones. Yeah. <laughs> well, that might have been the Chinook. Oh, <laughs> it was. It was. Got... <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have a show this weekend, so we get five to jets. Um... <laughs> I think the microphone was sort of struggling with it and your voice, and so we got this sort of weird background noise. So we might have to well, tell us a bit about it. the dinner plate tree again, because we couldn't hear you. Right. <laughs> oh, what an absolute treat, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, apart from the uh, technical hitches, that's quite, <laughs> it, gives, it gives me blooper material. We all know I'm very happy with my bloopers. Hey!